Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today I'm in County Cork and we are going camera trapping. Uh, got a tip off about a location uh, to work with otters. So I thought I'd bring my gear down, kit it up and show you how I set a camera trap up in the field. So uh, let's get started. It is warm, so for anyone who says that it rains too much in Ireland, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, today's spot uh, where I'm going to be working, um, it basically comes from a tip-off um, from some local guys who know about the otters, the fishermen, and also the guys who work on the pilot boats um, that deal with all of the shipping uh, out in the port of Cork. And luckily enough, I contacted the port and they said it was okay for me to have access, you know, got security clearance, things like that. Um, and these are sort of the processes I like to go through to get to some kind of exclusive locations. Um, and so today, hopefully, when we set the camera trap up, we'll get some really neat shots. But you know, with all the fishing crates around and the fishing um, that comes into this kind of little harbour here, it gives a perfect place for the otters to come out. And I know um, that they come out onto the pontoon pretty much every evening to feed on uh, and crabs and shellfish and stuff like that and even conger eels. Uh, so fingers crossed, um, we'll set something up and get some really nice shots. But right, I need to get down on this pontoon and uh, get some gear out. Right, there's some uh, fresh sprain on the rope ties, but not nearly as good as all of the crab's legs that are down the end. So I think I know where I'm gonna be setting my camera. So just taking a quick look around the pontoon, there is a huge amount of otter activity going on here. You can see um, by this kind of like rope tie that there's a large amount of sprain we've got here, all over the ropes and right down the side, and you can really smell it. Um, it's a fantastic smell. Um, it just really is nice. And once you know the smell, you just, ah, it just screams otter. Um, but if this wasn't enough, there's also oh, a load of these all over the place. And this is really what I'm after. Um, they're obviously feeding on shellfish, some nice big crab claws, and fingers crossed what we'll get is some shots of them eating out on the pontoon, because that'd be really nice. Um, there's a few kind of littered around this end of the pontoon, but down there, there is an absolute mass of shellfish that's going to be the perfect place uh, to hopefully set up my camera trap. So right, let's go. Right, so opening up the bag, I've got my camera, the D5100, spare lens, the 12 to 24 in case I want that wider angle. I'm going to be using the Scout from Kinesis today. Um, simple reason for this is it is an excellent trigger. Um, it's so reliable and accurate, it's absolutely perfect but also when working with otters, because they're wet when they come out of the water, any PIR sensors can often be tricked by um, animals that are kind of cold on the outside. Um, you know, the heat signature isn't straight away there. Whereas these being an active system, they create a beam. When something blocks that beam, sets the camera off, it means they're more reliable and they're more likely to get the shot that I'm after that's really key. Um, they also cover a great number of the camera parameters means I can set the number of shots I want, the interval, everything like that, that largely means um, I can just get it, you know, honed in and, and really accurate for what I want. Got a load of hardware, camera, clamps, things like that. Big oh, mountain sticks in case I need to put something somewhere where nothing exists at the moment. And an absolute boatload of batteries because you've always got to have spares. And the other thing that is essential cable ties you know it doesn't matter how many clamps and things you've got like that at the end of the day often it comes down to one of these uh, to making sure that something goes where it needs to be but the first thing to do is get my camera and work out my composition now for the composition of my shot what I want is my otter in the foreground here in a location that is sprained so you can see a lot of sprain and a lot of this um, debris from where they've been eating the crabs and then I want the background of the boats. That means I really need to shoot from this side this way. Um, now I could frame up and shoot from here across. That would be okay. You know, I've got a reasonable amount of background and a nice bit of foreground and the otter would be pretty big in the frame. But the problem is, it's not really that interesting. And I think with camera traps, one of the biggest things you wanna do 
is make a picture that is almost as perfect as you can get it because it gives you the chance to engineer everything. Um, so take the time and really get that composition perfect. And I think for me, it's gonna result hanging over the water to see where it's gonna go. Now what I can tell from hanging out with the camera, um, the 18 to 55 for this occasion, probably isn't gonna be wide enough to get the image I want. If it is, I'd have to have it about probably two foot over the water to get everything in I want. Um, so I think I'm gonna switch out to the 12 to 24 um, and see how that looks. But largely what I'm gonna aim for is the otter to be somewhere here, um, with this in the foreground, the boat off to the side, um, and then the lights illuminating my otter should be ideal. Um, but I think, you know, if I can mount it, it might be quite a nice picture. So I've got two options to mount my box. I've got my magic arm that's gonna give me a bit more extension, or I have the bull head um, with the plate. Reason I've got both is just because I wanna see um, what the difference is gonna be in terms of the positioning, um, but also in terms of the strength to hold the box. Because, you know, Magic Arm, as much as they're great, it's gonna be here for a couple of weeks, and I don't want it to get loose and fall in the sea, because that would be quite annoying. But um, if it's worth it for the shot, we'll risk it. You know about the boxes, uh, this is a Pelican, um, and then I've added on this like extra bit at the front. Now inside it has all the foam, like so, ready for the camera, and I've got my little um, kind of rain hood that goes on the front. Now on the bottom, I have a nice little cheese board that I can mount everything to, uh, to keep it nice and secure. And uh, so first I'm gonna put the camera in and get that all neatly settled in um, ahead of getting it out and getting the composition right. The camera is mounted in the box. As you can see, all seated into the foam. The reason the foam and the box are really useful is not only uh, does it kind of waterproof it and protect it, but additionally, it actually dulls the noise of the camera when it goes off that's really good. Makes it like a just little click rather than that big thud. Um, at the front, I've currently got um, 77 mil filter on the front um, of the lens, that's fine. I do have an 82 mil um, that I might screw into the outside just for that added protection. But this should be all right, especially um, with the hood that I've got there. So I'm gonna go ahead, mount up, and uh, get it out over the water. But first, um, always attach your mount before you attach the camera because you don't want to be fumbling around with something heavy over the water. I think finally got it how I want it. Right, so I've gone ahead and got the camera mounted. You'll see I've got a hood on it now, and also a little safety rope. Um, I don't want it to be kind of tight so that it pulls the camera out of position. It's literally just in case that breaks, it's gonna swing the camera down and not drop it into the sea. Um, and I've also put in um, this T-bar cross section from a uh, microphone pole, uh, and that's gonna give me two options to mount flash guns um, above so they're kind of 45 degrees looking down and that's gonna be my primary light and then we'll have a backlight set over there. Okay, so it's now fully raining and I'm starting to get quite cold but I finally got everything set up how I want it so I'm just gonna give you a quick run through. So this is my third flash, this is the rim light and then if we turn around, you'll now see the full setup. So we've got the camera, the trigger set across um, the steps where the otters are climbing up then we have our primary light, secondary light. This stuff here is black foil. Basically, I use it to just shield uh, which way I want the light to go. Um, it just means I can be more directional with it. That's really handy. I've also got some on my light at the back. Just gives me more kind of shape to the light. That's quite nice. Originally, I had the scout position to where the backlight is, um, but that didn't work because basically, this wire that goes down the middle of the pontoon, as it moved through it, as the tide goes up and down, um, kept setting the camera off. So what I've done is moved it closer, so now the otter will have to come out um, of the, you know, up the stairs uh, to set the shutter off. And what I've done with that is I've also used the directional um, triggering on the scout that I'll show you in just a second um, to make sure that's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna walk you through my settings on the camera, um, and then we're gonna set everything up, and then I'm gonna head home, because obviously it's raining, 
and I didn't bring a coat because when I left this morning it was about 25 degrees and it was absolutely lovely but right let's uh, let's walk you through before we get into this uh, what I'm gonna do is just undo the camera cable right so here's the scout um, as you can see it's got new pictures I'm um, just gonna walk you through the settings so if I press enter like this just gonna press my LED alignment to show you this function it's just telling me putting the LED on um, to show me that um, it's in position and when I go like that it shows obviously that something's in the way and then it would be triggering this light flashes when it would trigger um, to show that's happening I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to flicker all night pictures I've got five pictures set or oh, just so that's 95 just go back to five um, just because it gives me more chances to get the shot so double click across pre-trigger time I'm actually using 0.2 seconds simply is it just gives me the chance to make sure all of my flashes are woken up and ready to go really handy they should wake up automatically anyway um, but just gives me that extra kind of benefit on time 0.2 seconds per each one that should be absolutely fine for a single frame so no worries there on to off time I'm just putting a two second interval um, between each frame just gives me more opportunities to get pictures so I cover a 10 second period um, with my five frames is what I want to do now down from that uh, final off don't want that on and then just out of those now one thing I'm also doing is using the trigger setting sensitivity got that onto medium for an auto that should be absolutely fine um, but I'm also using the directional triggering fantastic feature of the scout is that I can choose if I want it to go right to left or left to right um, and I'll show you in a second that as I put my hand through um, left to right the camera won't go off but as soon as I go right to left it will come on and take my pictures really handy so you don't get wasted shots and you also don't get bum pictures it's really quite nice um, so yeah I've got that on there and then just out of that and that's pretty much it um, system settings one thing I am going to do is go into my time settings and use window 1 um, basically window 1 start time I'm starting at 8 p.m. and then it's going to go off at um, 8 o'clock in the morning the reason for that is it just means that I know it's going to be a nocturnal activity so I don't really want it going off but I just need to take that off um, to show you how it all works here's my trigger now if I go through this way nothing at all doesn't set the camera off you know do that again go straight through nothing at all but then if I come back this way there we go everything's going off as I wanted to first one second one perfect rear flush everything's going how I wanted to five frames over ten seconds absolutely perfect so now all we've got to do so we're just going to go into our system settings and just put our time settings so it's going to be window one on and I'll just double check that that's 8 p.m. start and then to go off at 8 a.m. that's absolutely perfect right so with everything set up all I got to do now is uh, leave it in position wait and hope that an otter decides that it wants to walk through my camera trap but you know with all these crab claws and sprain around I'm hopeful that we'll get something at this location but now it's gonna throw it down in a minute I'm going to pack up get everything sorted and head uh, back to where I'm staying here in Ireland because um, yeah I don't want to get soaked so I'll see you soon when we're when we're trekking this Right, so I'm back at my camera trap and uh, it's been a good week since I last put it out um, and now it's time to climb out, bring the camera in and see if we've got any images. Now I'm wearing a life jacket because the last time I did this I nearly fell in so I thought that today I would uh, take the health and safety precautions up a bit. Safety first, but right, let's see if we've got anything and uh, see if the otters have decided to uh, come out and, and have their picture taken. My love for the ocean I will be long gone by now It's some kind of divorce 